But Minnesota Vikings have come on really strong this season, and it's plays like this right here that has allowed them to have success. The offensive line picks up the blitz and holds up long enough for the quarterback to get the pass to the superstar wide receiver who makes a play, but even the design of the play is a really nice design. You're going to get two guys that are basically going to clear out, which is going to allow your best wide receiver to hit a deep dig route. This dagger concept happens every single week, hundreds of times. But the fact that every player on this offense, from the line to the running backs, to the receiver, to the quarterback, were able to execute and do their job, allowed this play right here to hit for 46 yards. Today, we're going to break down the Minnesota Vikings offense, the offensive line, the quarterback. Let's go ahead and jump forward into the next play. You have a 11-yard run here by Dalvin Cook. Really solid job by the center, Garrett Bradbury. You want to discuss this play and kind of break it down. This is a inside zone to the right, which means every offensive lineman is going to block one gap to their right. So center, Garrett Bradbury has a very difficult reach block here on the two-eye technique defensive lineman. Keep in mind, this defensive lineman is on the inside of that right guard. So it's a very difficult block. That too, he doesn't get a lot of help from the right guard, but he's still able to get out there and hook that defensive lineman. And without that block right there, this play does not work. The fact that he's able to hook and have that grip strength to hold this guy long enough, the running back can get to the outside. That's such a nice job by the center. Even on the backside, you're going to have the double team blocks here. The left tackle is going to go to the inside. 72 is going to help him. And because Tremaine Edmonds kind of takes himself out of the play, they're going to basically just stick there and really just seal off the D tackle and make sure the backside defense men can't pursue. This is a really nice job by the offensive line. Like Dalvin Cook doesn't even get touched until he gets like eight yards downfield. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and jump forward into this next play. This is actually the first of the two interceptions that Kirk Cousins throws. And truth be told, I don't, I don't disagree with the read by the quarterback. He makes the proper read. He throws it to the wide open player. Unfortunately, the ball just sails a little too high. In fact, from a read perspective, this is actually the proper read. The offense is going to run a levels concept, which means you're going to design three separate levels. And Kirk Cousins just has to make the read of where he wants to go with the football. And he's going to throw it to the receiver at the bottom of your screen. And unfortunately, it just happened to sill too high. But once again, when it comes to the actual read of the defense, he makes a proper read. He has his first wide receiver, which would be his first read here running across the middle of the field, and he sees that there's no way for him to get there because of the corner at the bottom. He's going to shift his eyes to the receiver running the dig, and the receiver is definitely open. And as he makes the pass, it just ended up being a little too high. And you guys see here, the cornerback was able to intercept the pass. Again, the read was correct, and even the pocket was fairly clean. And Ezra Cleveland got super physical, helping out Christian Derisaw here, absolutely crushing Number 90 right there. Really nice job by the offensive line, right? Uh, I've talked about the offensive line multiple times, and we're going to get into a lot of different plays with the offensive line. Uh, I said this in the past. If you guys have followed this channel, if you haven't, go check out some of the older videos. Uh, I've said that I think Christian Derrissaw is going to be one of the best left tackles in the NFL, and he is that. He is a top five left tackle right now. Uh, Ezra Cleveland, a really good guard in my opinion. Even center to right tackle. I think this is a really good offense line, and I think the rookie Ed Ingram just needs to continue to develop. He's given up a couple of sacks, but those sacks, generally speaking, are things that he can absolutely clean up, right? It's just some technique flaws. But I do think the Minnesota Vikings have a top six to seven offensive line because they are absolutely really, really, really good. Like, it is very clear when you put the tape on. And we're going to go through a handful of plays. Let's just go ahead and get to the next rep. I want you guys to watch Christian Darius on this rep go one-on-one -on -one with the defensive end. The defensive end is going to give him a ghost move. You guys see it right there. If you missed it, we'll back it up and kind of break it down. Darius does an absolute fantastic job on this play. The defensive end's going to get out of his stance. The defensive end's going to flash a move, which is referred to as a ghost move. He's going to get his left hand up right there. And what he's doing is he's trying to force Christian Darius to make a early move, try to punch him early. And his goal is to then dip past him. As you can see, there comes the dip. And Dersaw does not fall for it. Right? These mini battles in the trenches are very interesting to watch when you really slow it down. Because there's so many little things that go into every single rep. And you guys can see right here, uh, the pocket is really kept clean. 
Uh, you got five guys that are shown. Obviously, number 58 is responsible for the running back. But basically, across the board, you're in a one-on-one situation. The offense line absolutely holds up. Garrett Bradbury does a great job anchoring down. Ezra Cleveland does a good job with number 92. Darisaw and then Brian O'Neill gets a chip. This is a really nice job to keep the pocket clean and allow the quarterback to deliver the throw. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and jump forward into this run right here. This is a nine yard run by Alexander Madison. Really, really nice job by the offensive line. It's crazy how many yards this offensive line creates for its running backs. And I know they have some good running backs, but the offensive line does such a great job. If you guys watch Garrett Bradbury once again, he's going to reach on the two eye technique defensive lineman. Fantastic job reaching, getting to the inside and sealing this guy off. That's a really, really nice reach. Aside from him, if you guys watch Ed Ingram, Ingram's going to do a really good job making contact with the linebacker. And it's not just making contact. Note where he's making contact with 58. And look at how hard he's able to hit him. And look at where he's able to move him to. That's a really nice job in terms of showing that strength. And showing the ability to take a, a defensive player and moving him against his will. This is a really nice job making contact and moving a guy. I get it, it's guard versus linebacker, but there are some linebackers that can hold their ground. Ed Ingram has no issue moving number 58 here. That's a really nice job. Backing this up a little bit more, if you guys watch the left tackle, left guard, this may be the best left side of the offensive line. They just work really well together. I mean, look at the double team here, and then look at Cleveland get up to the next level, and then cut off the linebacker there. That's just a really, really, really nice job. It's blocks like this across the board that allowed this offensive line and even the running game, generally speaking, it's plays like this that allow these running backs to have so much success. This unit is absolutely dominating. It's been doing this the entire season. Jumping forward into this next rep right here, this is Kirk Cousins' second interception. This comes in the third quarter. You guys can watch the play. We'll break it down a little bit as to why the interception happened. Obviously, there was a little bit of pressure, as you guys saw. Uh, Christian Darisaw absolutely crushed the guy. We'll talk about that in a second, too. Uh, but let's talk about the play here. The defense is in a cover, two. They do try to disguise it a little bit pre-snap. They try showing some sort of cover three shell uh, with one safety deep. But you're going to see the second safety drops off. And you'll see as the play begins, this is just a cover two, which means Kirk Cousins just has to find the open gaps, the open lanes, the open holes. Now, generally speaking, the best way to attack a cover two is going to be between the corner that's playing the flats and the deep safety. So it's typically the outsides. Alternatively, you can also try to hit it right between the safety and the underneath defenders. Now, Cousins does technically see a wide open receiver here who's going to come back on a curl route. But he is going to be looking to the right, and as soon as he realizes he's not going to be able to hit the receiver here, he's going to turn to his left. As he turns to his left, he ends up getting pressured and hit at the same time. And as he throws the football, I'm not 100% sure if he thought this was one of his players, or if he was looking to hit this guy, and as he got hit, the ball just sailed towards the defender here but you guys can see it all kind of happens at the same time i think it was just a bad throw he should have just taken the sack you guys can see it from the backside angle the tight end here who's coming on the wham block who should pick up the defensive end ends up losing uh, there's nothing you can really do when a tight end loses their block but as a quarterback kirk cousins should not have thrown this pass not a major deal because he won the game at the end of the day uh, let's talk about this block a little bit man christian there saw getting physical getting tough and nasty and putting down a defensive lineman and this wasn't just putting a guy down this guy went flying i mean look at number 99 absolutely went flying one of the interesting things with this block is you know sometimes people double team uh, they'll use their shoulder pads but generally speaking will just use their hands Darisaw is going to actually cross his hands, right? He's going to cross those arms. He's going to make contact with number 99, basically using his chest. But he keeps his arms in front of his chest. Kind of interesting right there. Really nice job. I mean, number 99, you don't want to beat this guy right here. But it's understandable when Christian Darisaw and Drew Cleveland come at you together. It's a really nice job by the offensive line to kind of keep Kirk clean. But unfortunately, the tight end on the backside was not able to. And you guys see the quarterback throws an interception. Alrighty guys, jumping into Dalvin Cook's 81 yard touchdown run, I want to break this play down because the offensive line does a great job from the, the entire offense line. 
but really it's one guy and that is left guard Ezra Cleveland who really allows this play to happen now I shouldn't say it's really him as in the only guy that allowed this play to happen because truth be told if Dalvin Cook doesn't make the guy he mi makes miss right here this play does not hit right because he has to make that guy miss that guy will always be unblocked and he makes that guy miss and then he's basically able to run away from the other safety but just to back this up if you guys watch the left guard the left guard sets this play up because the left guard double teams down which allows the center to overtake that defender when you guys watch this play there's the double team that's going to allow the center to flip his hips and block number 99 but even after that double team the guard gets up to number 58 and he seals it off the fact that he's able to seal this off right here and of course he helped the center seal his guy off too at that point there's really only three guys number three here number 57 here as well as the cornerback way over here to the right but do keep in mind for two of those three guys you have Darisaw as well as the receiver here that are going to be able to block two of those three guys so this was a really nice job in terms of the design also one of the things that people may not notice with this play is this is a run to the weak side so you got the two tight ends to the left of your screen there's no one to the right of your screen, so it's a weak side run, which means the block by the guard is just that much more important. If you're able to block down and overtake a guy, you're basically able to run on these weak side plays. So really nice job by the left guard, the center, the tackle does a good job stretching out his guy. And of course, Dalvin Cook makes the guy miss that really allows this to play to hit. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and jump forward. Third and 13, two minutes left in the fourth quarter. And Brian O'Neill is going to give up the sack to Von Miller. And we're going to break this play down, really get into the nitty gritty details of the actual sack. Von Miller, superstar pass rusher. Brian O'Neill, in my opinion, is still one of the best tackles in the NFL. One of the best right tackles, specifically, I should say. I would put him as a top 10 right tackle. And he does lose this rep, so of course we're going to break the play down. You're going to see he does a good job initially getting out of his stance. He does a good job making contact with Miller, but Miller does what he is notoriously known for, and that is using his hands. Using his hands at a top tier level. Great job initially getting the right hand to the inside, left hand to the outside. Good solid face on this play. But as you're going to see, Miller with his left hand is going to lock in and grab that right hand of Brian O'Neill. He's basically going to shed that hand away, remove the leverage, and ultimately, because he's able to get that left hand on Brian O'Neill, and remove his leverage he's able to get past him he's able to get to the outside hit the corner and he's able to get to the quarterback and wrap the quarterback up uh, truth be told the quarterback just didn't have enough time because of the fact that Brian O'Neill lost this rep also understand because it'll start in 13 you got to be able to hit a deep pass right it has to go at least 13 yards the Vikings obviously ran a vertical concept on this play and it just did not work not a major deal right it is just one rep i know it was a very important rep because it was third and 13 and the game at this point was 23 to 27 um, but we'll go ahead and get into the fourth and 18 play right after this because jefferson was able to catch it for 32 yards and obviously this was the catch that everybody talks about i really like the design of this play the vikings are going to run a smash concept and the entire play was meant to go to jefferson here on this corner route the 4th and 18 was obviously that play that Justin Jefferson had a fantastic catch on. Um, really nice job. He runs the corner route. The quarterback gives him the opportunity and he makes the play. Fantastic job. The offensive line held, held up really well as well. Uh, you're going to have a defensive line game here on the right side. The defensive tackle here is going to end up getting in a one-on-one -on -one situation with O'Neal. And you'll see the defensive end after he gets chipped is going to come around to the inside. And Ingram and O'Neal do a good job passing off and switching right there. There's the switch. Uh, Ingram obviously gets to the defensive end. They're able to shut that down. Even uh, on the left side, the left tackle who's filling in for Darisaw here, Blake Brando is going to get the chip by Dalvin Cook. And he does a good enough job holding up. Uh, he At this point, he had already given up at least one sack. Uh, so it's a nice job by the O-line. Of course, you got the corner route and, and Cousins just throws it up there, man. Um, this is a nice job, of course, by Jefferson. Really saves the game, in my opinion. Uh, you don't make that catch right there. You probably don't win this game. Uh, it would be very, very difficult at that point. Uh, so really nice job. Personally, I think this catch is better than the OBJ catch. But of course, everyone has their own opinion. Really nice job. Let's get into the next rep. 
All right, you guys, jumping into this next rep, we are now in overtime. And you get this run right here by Dalvin Cook that goes for 10 yards. Really nice shot by that left side. Uh, left tackle, the tight end, number 86, and TJ Hawkinson, number 87. All do a great job. Um, first and foremost, fantastic job by Brendel and Mund. They're both going to basically reach to the left. The tight end does a good job in terms of passing off number 55. Right, He initially makes contact. 64 does a good job taking that wide step to his left. This is an outside zone run, not an inside zone. You can tell based off of how Dalvin Cook takes a wider angle. So for number 64, he really has to get out wide. He does a really good job being able to reach on number 55. And then 86 is obviously going to get off and go up to the next level. Really nice job by Johnny Mund right there on that block. TJ Hawkinson superstar at blocking i think people overlook how great of a blocker he was with the lions and even back in college the guy was known for his run blocking that's why he was such a high pick of course pass catching as well but the run blocking was the thing that really separated him. so this is a really nice job by the two tight ends and number 64 to be able to open up that lane for a 10 yard run just like that that simple none of these guys on the backside really matter right to be honest with you guys uh, they, yeah they have to get to their seals but really it's the front side that do all the work really nice job just going into the next rep Alrighty, you guys i want to jump forward into the final few plays there's about five minutes left in overtime i do know at this point right here it is third and ten and kirk cousins is going to hit justin jefferson on a corner route and that corner route basically gets them down to the two-yard line. So really nice throw, really nice route by Justin Jefferson. But even up front, the big boys get it done. I want you guys to watch the defensive line game and the ability by the center and left guard to process and pick it up. You get the one technique go to the left. You get the other D tackle come around. And they do a nice job processing and picking it up. That's a really nice job to keep the quarterback clean. And allow him to throw the pass up to Justin Jefferson. This is a really, really, really nice shot by that interior offensive line to be able to process and pick it up. And even then, man, the throw right here, I don't know how the hell Justin Jefferson is able to make this catch. But the guy is special. The guy's absolutely a superstar. Now, of course, I do want to get into the next play, which was a three-yard loss. And this actually happened twice in this game uh, where you're in the goal line and the running back ended up losing a lot of yards and we're going to talk about that really quickly he's going to lose three yards on this play you guys can see it right there running back gets tackled by the cornerback and you end up losing three yards on this play um and this happened twice right so uh, we wouldn't talk about it if it only happened once but because it happened twice that means there is some sort of issue with the way these plays are being designed uh, and i do think that there is an issue with these plays um Obviously, with this play, you can see Brian O'Neill reaches hard to the inside. Um, and his guy ends up kind of getting that penetration, which ultimately makes it a little hard for Cook. And then he tries cutting it to the outside. But I do think that some of these runs aren't being designed very correctly to benefit the teams. Kind of hindering the run game down in the red zone. I don't like this run concept at all. You're going to run an inside dive, which is a power run to the right. It just doesn't make a lot of sense because Brian O'Neill gets pushed back and the line of scrimmage gets reset, which forces Cook to have to cut it to the outside. You know, in the goal line, it is very tricky, but a play that could have worked maybe a little bit better would have been a zone play, either inside or outside to the right. Look at all of these guys that are stacked here inside the box. Like you have one, two, three, four, five, six guys stacked inside the box. And if you consider this guy out here as well, that's seven guys basically to the left of the right tackle. So an outside run to the right could have looked like this. The center could cut block here, the left guard here, the left tackle here. And you're basically going to let three guys on the backside go unblocked. And I think it would work if the run was to the right because then you would have ingram who would need to just get up to the three technique which would be a pretty simple block you can even double and then have the right tackle get up to the linebacker there and then from there you really just have three guys against three guys and when you and when you're in a three on three situation right number 30 and the two tight ends that means there's four gaps that these guys have to contain personally i think an outside run to the right would have made more sense than an inside run here on this play but that is just my personal opinion 
it's really not a big deal because you win the game, but there could be a time where you don't win the game, right? And at that point, you would look back and say, what went wrong? I think that could ultimately help correct some of these issues. All right, you guys, jumping into the next play, second and five, Kirk Cousins is going to get sacked. You're going to see Cleveland lose here to number 91, who's going to get inside leverage. Really nice job attacking the inside chest plates of Cleveland and being able to rip past him and get to the quarterback. So really nice shot. And then of course, third and 15, you guys know it's going to be an incomplete pass. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Definitely something different. If this is the first time you guys are on this channel, please consider subscribing. We do all 22 film breakdowns. Uh, we do offensive line content. We'll break down some quarterback play and a little bit more. And we really try to get into the advanced things that go into the game of football. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. I always appreciate any sort of feedback. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.